be looking at the changes that are being made to the way benefits are paid to people with disabilities this morning. If you were listening earlier, you'll have heard Mary's story. Mary's terrified that she's going to get stuck at home, essentially, lose her independence, if she loses the financial help that she gets at the moment which helps pay for her specially modified car. And Mary isn't alone. We've heard from lots of people worried about what will happen when the disability living allowance, that's what it is at the moment, changes in April. Deborah Sowby from the West Berkshire Independent Living Network, who offers help and advice to people with disabilities. What's your experience, Deborah? How worried are people? Well, I think, well, some people actually don't know what's coming. Those who do, as you've heard, are either petrified or angry or both. Um, actually, persecution is how one person put it to me yesterday. So some people think they won't be badly affected, but make no mistake, this isn't just tinkering around the edges. This is the abolition of disability living allowance was actually before the coalition government was considered unthinkable. So, yeah, people are scared. They're sick with fear. I mean, the sheer ruthlessness of what's being done and how and this is on top of other changes to the benefit system i mean what's happening is you know is reducing the welfare bill by 20 percent that's what it's about so understandably disabled people and carers feel scapegoated as over they're paying the price for an economic mess that wasn't of their making can you explain to us then because ignorance is part of the fear if you like how the government's going to work out who qualifies for the highest rate of of pip the new system when it takes over from disability living allowance? Well, the, the assessment is, is probably the, the, the biggest worry. And, and since it, it is about reducing um, uh, the, the cost of, of welfare, um, uh, this is a big uh, unknown factor as to what's going to happen. But clearly people will, will uh, lose their benefits. I mean, the, the uh, eligibility bar for the new um, benefit is set much higher um, than is currently for the disability living allowance. As Mary said, levels of pain and struggle aren't factored into the equation. Assessments is going to be a basic function uh, about basic functions applying crude measurements with results punched into a computer. Assessors won't understand the range of disabilities and conditions. It'll be about ticking boxes, totting up the scores. Um, But a lady rang me yesterday. She has two autistic sons. And she had to fight for the support that she gets. And her fear is that they'll end up in an institution. Um, and, and poverty is, is the real threat. I mean, I think what's going to happen is a lot of people are going to be put off, I think, applying for the new benefit because of all the, uh, the, because of the fear factor. But we're especially concerned about uh, the, the assessment process. People on the autistic spectrum, people who communicate through behaviour, people with learning difficulties people with mental health issues or head injury and people with sensory or communication impairments. Uh, you know, people uh, are going to have problems even turning up to the assessments. Um, so, so it's, you know, the big concern is this, the extent to which disabled people can define their needs in their own terms has been diluted over the years. In the new PIP assessments, it's impossible. The computer will decide. So um, in the, the key point that gets missed is this, that supporting disabled people to live independent lives with dignity and with the choices that others take for granted is a good use of public funds. Unlike some expenditure, war, for example, disability benefits are a sign of a civilised, caring society that's got its priorities in the right aura. De- uh, De- Deborah, I'm sure most, most people would agree with you. I mean, can, can you explain something to, to me? I mean, how do people, how do the, the clients and the people that you work with feel about the, the way that this debate is being framed uh, by the government and by some sections of the press? Because it's, it's sort of portrayed as, you know, strivers versus shirkers. I mean, how on earth can, do, do people feel about kind of being categorised as a shirker uh, when they've got ter- terminal disability conditions? Well, I mean, I think, you know, people are variously baffled. But but just so 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 frightened and and so and powerlessness. You know, it's a feeling of powerlessness that this is this is something that's being done, and because the you know effectively the the, the campaign um, has been very effective, and we you know it's been running o- over a few years now, um, and it's very effective. It's 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 working. Um, so, so the perception is that if you're a disabled person, then you're raking it in, uh, and you're giving nothing back, which is it's just so. It's certainly, I mean, we heard truth. Mary's story; it's just just not the case. No, Deborah, thank you for joining us. More on this coming after eight o'clock on BBC 